Hello everyone, welcome to The Social Doctor and this is Dr. Ayushi. The Social Doctor is a platform for the doctors by the doctors, where we help each and every doctor with his or her career growth. And we do that by discussing journeys, experiences and knowledge from successful medical practitioners. And today we have Dr. Rahul Parekh with us. With his exceptional knowledge of working in pharmaceutical industries, he is here to discuss about the opportunities and the positivities of the pharmaceutical industries. What are the different kinds of sectors that you can get into as a doctor after your graduation and your post-graduation? So welcome Dr. Rahul to the platform. It's really nice to have you here. Thank you so much, Ayushi. And good morning to everybody who is there in the live service, uh, live feeding. And I hope all of you are keeping safe, taking all the precautions. Yes, yes, definitely. So, you know, just, just starting off, what you have, you, you have been working in pharmaceutical industries for more than seven years now. So how did you plan to get into after your post-graduation? You know, how did your journey start from the start, you know, from your MBBS? How did it go? Well, um, I did my MBBS from Sikkim and Nepal Institute of Medical Sciences. And my MBBS was a very normal kind of MBBS where I was just looking for completing my semester exams and move on to the next year. Hmm. Um, so that is that that was the MBBS part of it when I did not think of uh, going into pharmaceutical industries as such. Hmm. Uh, while I was hmm. Hmm. while I was working in Delhi as a junior resident in various government hospitals. That is, that is where I got exposed to pharmaceutical industries a bit. But largely, that time, I had not decided to go into pharmaceutical industries. What happened next was, one thing that I was very sure was that I wanted to go into managerial positions or go into managing a hospital. And that is where I did my MBA too. I thought while, did my, while doing my MBA, uh, after MBBS, I could go into a MS position, a medical superintendent position uh, in the long run. And that is why I wanted to do my MBA. But then as I was working, I got more exposed to pharmaceuticals, yeah. how they work, and the kind of impact that pharmaceutical industry does. Yeah. That is where I got more and more interested. And I took up pharma MD pharmacology to go, go into uh, uh, pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. Now, let me tell you here, I was so interested to go into pharmaceutical industry that on the day that I was taking MD pharmacology, I had uh, a DNB interview also, where I was getting all the specialties that I could have uh, wanted, uh, uh, except radiology. But I still took pharmacology because that is the thing that I had chosen for myself. So this journey as a whole was, um, was very unique to me. Um, initially, when I started, um, it was, Till now, it's very exciting and it's a lot learning experience from the time that I started till now. That is what I would say in a nutshell. Hmm. That's, that's really nice to know to have. And so now when you mentioned that you did your MBA post after your MBBS to understand about the pharmaceutical industry, did, that, did it help afterwards also to, 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 to get a job or you know to get established in the pharmaceutical industry? Do you suggest this? to the students who want to get into pharma industries? I would say it helped me immensely. Um, first, to get into pharmaceutical industry, because uh, pharmaceutical industry looks at you as a scientific person who has that knowledge, that depth of knowledge that nobody has in that uh, industry. That's why, that is why you are uh, so much reward there. Hmm. The other thing is, as an MBA in your working life, gives you a lot of different perspective. And you know, Ayushi and every, everyone there on the live call. Mm -hmm. We as medicals have a, have a very linear perspective to things. Right. We go to college, we, are, we uh, have a bookish knowledge till third or fourth year MBBS, mm -hmm. and then we go into clinicals, right? So our perspective to me medicine or to life is, becomes streamlined because we are going day in, day out um, into that stream for a lot of uh, time. But marketing gives you a very different mm. perspective. It gives you a perspective to think very differently and also um, helps you further progress and make your you know, strategies in uh, uh, pharmaceutical industry as such. So I would, I would definitely say yes, but there are a lot of things to it. One question that may come to your mind is, will marketing only help after MBBS? I'll do marketing and does it help? I would say it would help if you have some experience, 
Um, if you have some experience in pharmaceutical industry, go ahead and do a marketing. It would definitely help. But on the other part of it, now that there are so many doctors in pharmaceutical industries, uh, a post grad in um, in your uh, special ed or uh, post grad uh, after MBBS definitely helps. MBA is an additional degree that you can get to further your skills and enhance your visibility in terms of uh, of the growth. Okay. Okay. Nice to know. So now when you have been into this sector for seven plus years, how do you see the, you know, the things changing in it since the time you joined till now? And how do you see the future also coming in this industry? Okay. That's a very interesting question, I would say, Ayushi. Um, pharmaceutical industry, I would, I would take it as, as a very, uh, in a generalized format. See, uh, for the past 10 years, you can see a lot of changes has come on how things operate. Same is with different industries, whether it is pharmaceutical, whether it is tech, whether it is IT or any of these industries. So pharmaceutical mm. industries over a period of time has gone a major change. Now there is advanced learning, now there is information, you know, there is this AI which is coming in. A lot of other things. Same with pharmaceutical mm. industries. In the last 10 years, there has been a major change in the pharmaceutical industry. And this mm. change has accelerated in the past two years. Now there are different ways of doing things. One, one data hawk is, I would say, the COVID period, right? So pharmaceutical industries are doing things in a very different way. Uh, it involves reaching out to various stakeholders that we will talk about in later in a very different way. Mm they are becoming more patient-centric. And one of the reasons that I got into patient into pharmaceutical industry was I always wanted to have more patient-centric approach. While as a doctor, I would communicate one-on-one -on -one with the patient, but either I can make a larger change to, to a patient, right? So on the patient point of view, it is changing a lot. How we work with the government, it is changing a lot. And how we work with our different stakeholders, those are doctors, and policymakers changing a lot. Mm -hmm. In terms of, um, this is working with stakeholders as such, but if you see in terms of uh, uh, the innovations that they are doing, pharmaceutical industries are working on a lot of innovations, whether it is drugs, there is so much research going on, uh, innovations that it is sometimes beyond the point to think what, where uh, are we going. And also in terms of uh, how they operate. Yeah, so this is a nutshell, a lot of it going on, going ahead, there will be a lot of changes. Great, great. Nice to know. Now understanding, you know, there is a lot of research, a lot of work going on in pharma industry. What are the different kinds of sectors that you think doctors are engaged in and, you know, do a substantial growth in? So, you know, sectors that help them to grow well. Okay, so... Um, uh, see, pharmaceutical industry initially to us is us going there and working um, as a medical person, right? But as and as I learned more, pharmaceutical industry is, is kind of an ocean, right? It's mm. so huge, you will never be able to understand the depths of that industry as such. But then where doctors can make a real impact is one, medical affairs. So medical affairs is a forte for doctors. Uh, medical affairs is part of almost all the teams that pharmaceutical industries work with, right? If there's a molecule, medical affairs will be a very important part of it. Reason being, nobody understands science better than us. So that's the most important for us and, they, and nobody can make strategies based on that science. Mm -hmm. So medical affairs is the most common uh, place where doctors go into. The other is clinical research. Mm -hmm. With the amount of clinical research happening in the country and across the globe today, it, it brings on immense opportunities for doctors as such. Because again, the science that doctor brings, the experience that doctor brings, and the, uh, and the interaction with patient brings that the doctor can do. Nobody else can do. So that is one part of it. You want to speak anything? No, 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 nothing. Okay. The third, uh, and then there are different uh, places uh, where doctor can go to. And uh, the third I would like to come here is, um, the medical writing part. 
now like i said there's a lot of research going and a lot of uh, you know uh, medical affairs part i don't say but we don't do work ourselves mm. we outsource it to different people who do work for us that is the writing part uh, the clinical research when they have to write or make those you know articles or let that data out then they get into a medical writing agency who writes it for them now this is a third part which doctors can do it at home and they are uh, they are paid pretty good uh, this is third part of it the fourth part of it is pharmacovigilance now pharmacovigilance every company has a adr reporting right of course drugs would have adr and adr will it, it's compulsory by law to report adrs yes. to the doctor to the pharmaceutical industry and to the government as such Mm. So pharmacovigilance is one part where doctors can go and have their, uh, you know, uh, a very strong say. After this, I would say there is no end. There are various ways in which doctor can work, um, and they are always preferred. Whether it is uh, the supply chain, whether there is marketing, I see a lot of doctors going into marketing now. Um, so whether it is supply chain, whether there is market or marketing, whether it is sales. the benefit that doctors get here is that they have that scientific knowledge that nobody can have even if they spent years into that therapy area uh, that depth of knowledge and that's what makes them special and that's what uh, gives them a lot of um, you know that uh, special place in that industry correct correct so now when you mention about all of these different you know sectors from of engaging doctors do you think there needs to be any courses that doctors should do to get into these pharmaceutical industries okay and that's again an interesting question some some you know one of the things that doctors would think uh, when they are looking to go into industry now here um, one thing that i would say is of course in today's era where there are a lot of doctors into industry to different phases a post graduation would help Uh, post graduation into anything specifically into pharmacology or a clinical branch if they want to come into mm-hmm. industry mm-hmm. secondly i would say an mba does help like i said it gives a very different perspective mm-hmm. third uh, there are lot of courses available like i said uh, industry offers um, a bouquet of you know um, what they call it of opportunities for you to go into now you have to see what opportunity you want to go into suppose you want to go into marketing Uh, even if you are doing your MBA, there are a lot of courses available online these days, or you know, weekend courses which are available like from different IIMs where you can do, mm-hmm. learn, and do go back. So yes, these are the courses. Uh, suppose you want to go into supply chain. Suppose you want want to go into marketing. You can you can you want to go into pharmaceuticals. There are uh, you know those courses are available these days. Take those courses and then uh, you can go into respective fields, specialize for respective. one thing that i want to say here is um, it's good to be specialized these days in the industry otherwise you take those years to progress hmm hmm okay so now you know and if so what i understand is any graduate or post graduate should do some courses to get an edge in the industry yes absolutely so now if we have done the courses how to get into the industry so this is something that you know every doctor maybe we as doctors are not trained to do that because there are no college placements you know to understand how to apply to these industries and get there for jobs is something you know if you can guide on yes so this is a dilemma that i faced too and i had to search because i had i, I didn't have something like a social doctor as such mm-hmm. i had to search in and out how to apply and go into a hospital industry correct uh, so i must uh, admit that i went through this dilemma for around 2 months i searched researched it very properly and then went into it but i would say um, build a good cv if you want to go into a hospital industry build a very good cv it will help you uh, post that cv because our cv will be hospital industry cv will be a very different from a normal office uh then apply on various digital pl- platforms uh nokri and linkedin being the most prominent ones search the words uh, code words that you want to go into mm. and apply through these um uh, these online platforms and once you get a call um 
you know, you have to go through that interview, uh, that interview phase with the HR and with the, with the different leads to go into pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. So I would say here, Nokia and LinkedIn are two most important uh, online platforms that you can uh, go through. So now when you mention keywords, you know, what exactly do you mean by keywords? And then what are the different kind of profiles that doctors get appointed on in the pharmaceutical industries that they can use those words as keywords to search for their jobs, you know? Anything on that, you know, if you can mention. Yes, yes, absolutely. So suppose you want to go into medical affairs, hmm. yeah. um, right? Medical affairs, scientific affairs, you'll get, a, you'll, you'll get the jobs that you would want in medical affairs. Um, if you want to go into marketing as such, so you can write marketing, right? Um, pharmacovigilance, pharmacovigilance as such will come. Mm -hmm. If you want to go into clinical research, so clinical mm -hmm. research, suppose you want to start as a CRA, clinical mm -hmm. research associate, mm -hmm. automatically CRA would be uh, your option for IT grad. Or clinical research as such would be a, would be a keyword. Um, mm -hmm. For medical affairs, because that is where the doctor the doc is mostly going to search. So mm -hmm. there can be some more keywords which you can search for medical affairs and clinical uh, scientific affairs is something that I said. Then you can also search with medical advisor. You can search with manager medical affairs. So these are the four or five things that will help you in further enhancing your, have a directed approach to whatever you are um, focusing yeah. on. Great, great. Nice to know this and you know what, where can we actually land into. So now after getting into the job, do you, is it that you know people have to upgrade themselves? Are there courses that people have to do regularly? Or, you know, secondly, also I want to understand, as you mentioned, there are different kind of sectors that you mentioned. Are there also industry specific trainings? For example, medical writing, you know, if somebody wants to get into that or into pharmacovigilance, are there industry specific trainings that you think that people should do? To get better chances to get into these sectors and post that also should they do multiple trainings what is your suggestion see um, whether it is industry whether it is a clinical okay uh, learning and training is a continuous process right okay. while we are uh, working um, in a clinical branch right yes. we continuously do those cmes attend workshops and enhance our knowledge yes. same as an in industry mm -hmm. um, it is part and parcel of your growth, right? So once you don't, you stop learning, you stop growing. So whatever industry you are in, you should always work towards learning, training, and that growth. Hmm. Now, answering specifically to your question, hmm. what are the trainings which are there? Suppose I want to go into medical affairs as such. Hmm. There are medical affairs trainings which are available on various platforms. Coursera or all those online platforms. Yes. If you want to go into medical writing, medical writing, there are a number of trainings available in medical writing as such. Um, how to do medical writing? You know, starting from very basic to very advanced. Mm. How to read a paper that is very basic, very advanced, how to write very good articles or uh, you know, bigger you know, articles as such, mm. research ones. Uh, that is what I'm talking about. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's always uh, a process. Um, it is up to you to go out and search to mm -hmm. understand more and then go into it, right? Mm -hmm. um, nobody would be able to advise you, but you. And that is what I want to tell everybody in this uh, live seminar. Great, great. Nice to know this. So now when there are different sectors, what is the kind of pay scale that you know it normally starts with for a postgraduate or a graduate who enters into a pharmaceutical industry? Okay. Uh, the most common question that comes to our mind, yes. and let me tell you very frankly, it did come to my mind yes. also while I was entering. And one of my, I have explained my reasons of going into pharmaceutical industry, but you know, one of my reasons also, and one of everybody's reasons also would be pay scales. Uh, but like yes. clinical, uh, mm. pharmaceutical industry will give you a comparatively better pay scale uh, at the level and the position that you enter. This is for sure. But then pay scale depends upon how you grow in the industry. Mm. And like we were speaking, uh, we were talking before, 
uh, when you don't learn, when you don't grow, right? So over a period of time, it is up to you, your skills, and your growth. Uh, all of these are in your hand to mm-hmm. take care, of, right? So medical can give you a lot of uh, that background to enter and to make your mark. But then to grow, have a higher pay scale, you have to create value, right? What you are to you have to show that, and for that. It can, you know, um, it and the pay scale will depend upon it. But giving you an over overall view, a very basic with a very basic uh, MBBS kind of uh, job that you can take, which is a regional medical advisor. But I would say, if you go into medical affairs, you can start somewhere between ten to fifteen lakhs. But upwards, I would say there's no limit. I've heard people getting into crores and more than that, adding value to it. So. While pay scale is a part of it, there are other things also associated with it, which does matter after one point. And that is something that you should also look for. Uh, getting time, you know, adequate time with your family, you know, doing whatever you want, sharpening your skills. There are other things with other benefits that uh, industry brings to you. And a thought should go into those benefits also. Correct. So now I'm talking about these benefits, you know, how is your lifestyle in, in, you know, has been in these years? How do you, what are the pros and the cons of the industry? I would take cons first. Okay. And the biggest con for you as a doctor is that you cannot see patients, right? So I would say to people there on the live chat, be very, 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 uh, uh, you know, clear that once you're in industry, you will not be able to see patients. I myself was very clear that I, I don't want to see patients. I always wanted to be into management positions. Mm-hmm. And that is where I entered into industry. I still do not get an, uh, that itch to see patients, to be very frank. But I am sure many people would have their thought process otherwise. Yes. So uh, that's a con, mm-hmm. part the major con part that I was. Mm-hmm. Right. There are others too, which come as you grow, as you learn, and industry that you are, right? But this is a major differentiating point that I would want you to have in mind while you're deciding to go into industry. Correct. The pros are um, quite many, which is industry. One is that, of course, uh, when you're not handling patients, like times like COVID or the increased legal uh, thing that we are doing on, right? Uh, you can make a larger change to patients' lives, a larger impact on those patients by making what, by what you're doing. Right, not one to one interactions. Mm. Pros are also in the lifestyle that uh, industry gives you. Right, mm. so the time that you have, uh, you have weekend holidays, Saturdays and Sundays, yes. uh, on an average. Uh, the daily routine is not that um, you know tied up as a surgeon or as a medical person uh, mm. would it be. Right, I have a lot of time for myself also, where I dedicate to reading, where I dedicate to uh, you know, honing my skills or doing something that I'm passionate for, maybe playing. So these are the aspects of your life which you can balance when you are in an industry, which I won't say that as a doctor, you could not be able to balance. You can do that also as a doctor, but then uh, more aptly you are able to do it in the industry. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is really nice to know. So this, yeah. this, this is one- You don't have- you don't have emergencies in an industry. Yeah. So uh, a lot of uh, time that you can be If I am um, I'm on a holiday, I'm on a holiday. I don't even take a call. If I have my time off, I have my time. So that is something that I can decide. Yes, yes. That's very nice to know. So now, you know, when you have got, you have been into the industry, how has your growth pattern been in the industry? Is it, you know, how is it for helping the doctors to understand who plan to get into the industry? How is it? Is it slow? Is it self-paced? How, how do you see your, by your experience, you know, how is the growth in the industry going as an individual? Um, see, I would generalize it and say it depends on. Okay. The growth in the industry, uh, it's on two parts. Like um, I started with a very basic growth, right? And over a period of time, I've come to a role which is uh, largely, 
encompasses uh, you know into a leadership or a senior leadership position correct so um, that is the role that i am that i am and and going ahead i would go into more senior roles but i would say there are two kind of roles spe- specifically in medical affairs that i would talk about one you can talk about the therapy and you can go into that therapy and you know uh, be not only a indian or a national take up a national role but a international role so yeah. you have that options to be in india and take up that specific therapy, therapy that you are working in and take up international roles too or secondly the second path can be you can go into more administrative head mm-hmm. medical affairs or director medical affairs kind of position where you can you know uh, have, you know look at a team under you and then you know guide the team uh, accordingly so these are the two roles which are there specifically in medical affairs and it is entirely up to you mm-hmm. how you want to go ahead in those roles so this is very uh, specific and personalized to a person and depends on how much uh, skills and you know opportunities you get correct correct nice to know this as well so any suggestion from your end for the graduates and the post graduates that plan to get into the industry something from your end to help them you know get a easier path two things uh which i always think and i know one is though you already have a good scientific uh, knowledge and you will be revered upon in the industry mm-hmm. okay you will be looked upon but doctors as such are not show masters right so whatever you do show it well so once you are in industry show it really well what you are doing and it of course will reflect on your career second is um your communication skills communication skills form a very important part of your time in the industry and mm-hmm. hone it well and you are going up uh, upwards so these are the two specific things that i would like to point out when you talk about uh, you know growing up or moving up the ladder in the industry okay okay great great so and you know lastly we would like to add- ask any motivational quote from that you have been following till now that keeps you motivated or anything in your life you know that you have stuck to since the start so that that motivates the student you know to to go on the right track there is no specific motivational quote that i have but i do uh, um, you know time and again look at you people who have who have uh, you know motivated me Mm-hmm. uh one is uh, michael jordan so he fought poverty he fought a lot of challenges to become what he was right to uh, achieve that fame mm-hmm. and um, you know everybody's life is not very much it, it's not easy once you are into into this game by any game whether it is clinical or industry or uh, life as such right so you have to work on those challenges face those challenges and continuously you know push yourself beyond the challenges you want to rise higher and that is where you know i really like mr jordan how he has done that and his story and i would uh, want to tell you all all that challenges will come in your life but go beyond that challenges look beyond that challenges that is where and that is when you will start growing and making a change into your and you know uh, lives around you. okay thank you so much and i'm sure you know this this thing will definitely motivate people understanding about the pharmaceutical industry how to get into it is something which is very which is something you know we as doctors still are into mystery you know to understand that and thank you so much dr rahul for clearing us that for helping us understand what are the different sectors how to get into how can we explore into it if you know i hope this discussion have helped you if you have any questions anything you want to ask do let us know we can share dr rahul's you know email id you can definitely connect with him that will actually help you to understand how can you you know get create your path into the industry and succeed into it thank you so much dr rahul for discussing this with us i'm sure this would have helped so many students out there thank you very much dr ayushi i think it was great i could uh, 
I could discuss some expert excerpts from my life and discuss it with you all. It was very good talking to you, all of you there on the live service. Yeah, there. same here. Thank you. Yeah. Please yeah. reach out to me. Uh, email can be mentioned, and I'm on LinkedIn too as uh, dr.rahulparak. So uh, please reach out to me for any further queries and questions, and I'll be more than happy to help you. Yes, yes. Do reach out to him if you have any questions related to pharmaceutical industry. Also, do share this with your friends and colleagues who who are confused, who do not understand where to go to, and are you know considering pharma sector to explore. Do share this. I'm sure this will help them to understand a bit about the sector, and also give you give an idea of what they can do. Also, do follow us on our Instagram and YouTube channels. There you can find all our old videos that can also help you with your career growth. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us at this time, and and you know discussing such an important topic. Thank you so much, Dr. Rahul. It was really nice. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye.